Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I am here with my wrap-up for the Autumn Readathon, Witchathon, and for, of course, a couple of other books as well. I also have a very quick, very important channel update. I will put the timestamp in the description. I mean, hopefully you'll watch the whole video, but just in case you really just don't feel like listening to me talk about the books I've read, please at least watch that quick little channel update. And I will be sure to link my TBR video down below where I talk about the challenges and the hosts and everything else for the readathons that I participated in. So the first couple of books I read at the end of October were not for either of the readathons, and the first one was was Quicksilver by R.J. Anderson. This was actually a reread for the Booktube Readathon project, and I think the prompt that I chose for this month was to reread a book featuring a main character in the LGBTQIA community or by an author from that community. So this book is going to be really hard to talk about because if I if I do any kind of summary, I'm gonna spoil like the entirety of the first book. The first book is called Ultraviolet, and even though it is a companion novel and this is not like a direct sequel or anything, it does follow the events of that book. So I'm gonna kind of talk in general about what I enjoy about these two books and hopefully that will help you decide whether you want to pick them up. I really love the fact that these books are kind of genre bending, like I don't really know how to categorize them and I encourage you not to look this book up on Goodreads. I think even if you read too many reviews for the first one, sometimes people kind of spoil important things in it, but I really love the characters. The main character, Nikki, of this book is an asexual character and that was just really wonderful to see that representation. There's a lot of great conversation about it and I think it's done really well. I really love the friendships and the relationships in this book. I love the pacing and this is kind of funny because I tend not to notice pacing in a book. But in this case I do feel like these books are really well suited for many kinds of readers. I think especially this book does have a lot of kind of uh, suspense in a way or like kind of mystery but there's also a lot of great character development. And as far as Ultraviolet, the first book, I do highly recommend that one. I do really enjoy it but I think if you finish that one and you're like, eh, that was fine, but I don't really need more, I would still encourage you to go on to this one and to see if you would like this more, because even though I liked Ultraviolet, I absolutely love this book. I gave it five stars, and I really recommend both of these novels. Next, I finished The Son of Neptune by Rick Riordan. This is the second book in the Heroes of Olympus series, and this was a buddy read with my lovely friend Amy from Blondin Bookish, which has been so much fun. This is a reread for me, and I actually remembered that this was the I think this was my least favorite of the series the first time I read it, and I kind of felt the same way about it again this time. I just feel like there were some plot elements I didn't enjoy as much, and we are following a different cast of characters, and even though I really like the characters, I feel like the plot surrounding them wasn't always as compelling as the lost hero. Again, this is like a very vague synopsis because of spoilers, but I did enjoy it. I will say there's like this kind of romantic subplot that I think is really weird age-wise. Um, Amy and I talked about that quite a bit. We just, we feel like it's a little bit strange and that it could have been handled better. And as I said with The Lost Hero, Rick Riordan, I think, is just incredibly good at endings, like writing endings to books in a series. And another thing I really love about this series and that continued in this book was the detail in the background we got on, on the gods and the mythology. Like, they actually feel like fully developed characters now, and I, there's a couple of them we, that we see more of in this book in particular that I just really enjoy. Like, I really like seeing their motivations rather than just having them create situations that our demigod characters react to. I just have really enjoyed that. So I ended up giving The Son of Neptune 3.5 stars. Next we are finally getting into my readathon books. The first one I finished was The Outcast by Kathleen Kent. This is a historical fiction novel set in the 1800s kind of Wild West setting, and we follow two main characters primarily. One of them is Nate, and he is like a private investigator kind of detective policeman guy, and the other one is a former prostitute named Lucinda who has escaped the brothel where she was really mistreated and she's kind of striking out on her own. And I will say, I think the synopsis for this book is pretty misleading, because it kind of made it sound, to me at least, like Lucinda and Nate were going to meet up and have to solve a mystery together. And that's really not what happened. Like, actually, their paths didn't even cross until a huge chunk of the book was already over. And when they did, it kind of, it wasn't really what I was wanting. I had a lot of mixed feelings about this book. I think, technique-wise, it was very well done. Like, the writing was really good. Like, you really got a sense of the atmosphere and the world that these characters live in and the, like, kind of morality of this world. Like, it's it's a brutal place to live and exist no matter who you are, especially if you are a woman or a person of color or a disabled in some way. And you really get this sense of just bleakness from from this book and from this world. But all that being said, this was not really an enjoyable experience, and it also wasn't what I was hoping for from the back of the book. Like, I went in expecting a pretty tough and honest novel, like, that wasn't the problem, but I had a lot of issues with a certain character who took bad things that happened to them and used it to hurt other people for no reason. And I don't mean, like, reacting to the people who hurt them, like, in self-defense or something, or even just, like, 
growing up in these certain terrible circumstances, how that can affect how people see the world and treat other people. I don't even mean that. I mean like above and beyond. Like they went out of their way to cause unimaginable suffering for people they didn't know very well just because of, of selfish reasons or because they had been hurt in the past. And that's kind of what I had an issue with. Like I love anti-heroes. I love complicated motivations for characters. But where I have issues is when it's set up like we're supposed to feel sorry enough for this character, like we're supposed to understand them and to kind of excuse what they did. At least I felt like that's what the book was trying to do and I was just not on board for it. There are also some upsetting torture scenes and I gave The Outcast three stars. It's very well written and if you are in the mood for this kind of story, I think it's a good example of one, but there were a lot of reasons that it just didn't quite hit the mark for me. Next I finished An Assassin's Guide to Love and Treason by Virginia Baker. This is a historical fiction novel that takes place during Shakespeare's time and we are following two main characters, Lady Catherine and Toby Ellis. So this book is set during the time period where the rivalry and the hatred between Catholics and Protestants in England was at its peak. So Catherine's father is actually killed for being a Catholic and he was actually part of a kind of secret underground group that was trying to overthrow Queen Elizabeth, in this case by assassinating her, and install a different mon monarch on the throne. So Catherine, in order to avenge the death of her father, becomes part of this group and she is kind of sent in as a spy to infiltrate and to carry this out. And then Toby is a an actor slash playwright and he is sort of working on the other side. We also have a production of Twelfth Night by Shakespeare that is central to the plot of this story and to uh, Lady Catherine's plan that she is helping to carry out and to, to what Toby is trying to do. There's a lot of mystery and intrigue and espionage in this book and I ended up really enjoying this. I think that the title is sort of misleading in a way because even though it's very cleverly written and there are great moments of humor throughout this book, I feel like it makes it sound like it's going to be really cutesy or like, like it's not going to focus on some of the darker parts of this history and I didn't feel like that was the case. I think there was an, a really great balance between the funny bits and like the fun and just the enjoyable parts of the story and kind of the darker elements of what was going on. Like I really felt throughout this book a real sense of fear for Catherine and that she could be found out at any moment and that people were being killed, you know, just for the religion that they believe in, which of course still happens today, unfortunately. And I just feel like there was that sense of the world throughout the kind of shenanigans parts of these plots as well. I also really enjoyed the characters. Also I want to mention that Toby is bisexual and that was such a cool thing to see and the way it was handled in this book and the way that he reacted to this, you know, because he grew up in a society where that was not accepted, but kind of how he has come to terms with that and what it means for him. I just think that was a really well done part of the book and it wasn't glossed over either. Another thing I really liked is, so this book has the kind of girl having to dress up as a boy trope and that's something that I tend not to enjoy. I find that to be kind of overdone or annoying I guess, but I actually really enjoyed it in this one because it felt more believable. And another thing that I think really worked was the way that changed the relationship between Toby and Catherine because of course he is attracted to men and women. I think it made their relationship believable. It allowed it to develop romantically from the beginning so that their feelings didn't kind of come out of left field, which is something, again, that I tend to find with girl dresses up as boy kind of stories. So I really like how that was incorporated. And I absolutely loved the like Shakespeare elements of this book. I will say they took quite a few liberties with the characterization of Shakespeare. Like they made him kind of, I don't want to say silly, but I think they made him a lot more eccentric and comical even than he probably was. And of course, this is completely opinion because we don't know a lot about his personality really. We just have his work and some basic information about his life. So even though they kind of went over the top with him, I still had so much fun reading about his character and I absolutely loved the parts with the play. I feel like this is one of the only books, possibly the first book I've read, that really captured what it feels like to work in theater and like the weird camaraderie and the fun of it and the stress of it and the fact that it's it just like completely takes over your life but you wouldn't have it any other way if this is what you love to do and I read a few books that tried to do that and for the most part they did it really badly. I feel like this one really captured that. I did have a couple of very small drawbacks to this book like the ending I felt was kind of rushed. There was one part in particular that I thought really we didn't spend enough time on and I wish that Catherine had been more active in that final kind of chunk of the book. But other than that, I really, really enjoyed this one. I highly recommend it. And I ended up giving An Assassin's Guide to Love and Treason 4.5 stars. Next, I finished Women of Camelot, Queens and Enchantresses at the Court of King Arthur by Mary Hoffman, illustrated by Christina Ballett. I really, really enjoyed this one. Let me just show you some of the gorgeous illustrations. As the title kind of implies, this is basically a retelling of sorts 
of the some of the female characters from the King Arthur legends and myths kind of surrounding him and I think this was fantastically done. I like that there were a few lesser known stories in addition to the ones you kind of expect going into a book like this and I think my favorite was actually The Loathsome Lady, which was a story about Ragnell. I don't know how to... I probably am not saying that right. And I think that one was actually the one that may not have been in the original tale, but I really enjoyed that one. It was kind of similar to a Chaucer story, which was funny because the only bits I've ever read of Chaucer were in class and I kind of hated them. I liked how some of the, the stories kind of connected to each other a little bit and I ended up giving Women of Camelot 4.5 stars as well. And finally, the last book I finished during the readathon and during the month of October was The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the second book in the Raven Cycle series and I buddy read this with my wonderful friend Huck from Badger Reads and it was so much fun talking to her about this book. The Raven Cycle is about these four prep school boys and their friend who is a girl named Blue and Blue has been told her entire life that she is going to kill her true love if she kisses him. And she is from like a family of psychics, which is why they know this. I kind of hate having to give that synopsis because it makes you think that this is going to be a romantic series, and it's absolutely not. I've only read the first two books, but so far that has been a very, very minor subplot. It's much more about the atmosphere of this southern town and this quest that these characters are going on to wake uh, Glendower, this mythical Welsh king, and there's a story that if you wake him, he will give you a wish. They're working together to try and find him, and there's so much more going on, so if you're put off by that description, the whole true love's kiss thing, it's really not at all what these books are about. And even though I didn't enjoy The Dream Thieves quite as much as the first book, I did still really, really like it. I really love Maggie Steve Otter's writing. I love the atmosphere. I love how, like, autumnal and wintry these books feel. And I really just deeply love all of the main characters. Like, I really enjoy them and connect to them all and I just want them to be happy. And there are just a lot of things I really enjoy about this book, even though, like I said, there are some... Like, I did have some issues with this one that I didn't have in the first book as much. Like, some things about, like, plot threads that were dropped and certain character decisions. But overall, I did really enjoy this. I gave The Dream Thieves four stars. And by the way, this is the book where we meet Kavinsky. And I can say definitively, I do not understand the, like, fandom's obsession with him. Because, like, everybody talks about this series. Like, love it or hate it, it comes up a lot. And apparently Kavinsky is, like, this really popular, like, love to hate him kind of character. And I read this and I'm like he's just a shitty person. Like, I, I don't understand why people like him. Okay, so now for the very quick channel update or announcement. Basically, I have decided not to do tags anymore, or at least not nearly as frequently, because I know I do a lot of them on this channel. Like, I get tagged in a lot of things, and I'm very grateful for that. I don't want this to come off as, like, everybody stop tagging me because I hate it. That's not what I'm saying here. Um, it just, I've noticed that tags, they take a lot more work and preparation for me than other videos and that might be surprising but I really try and make my tag videos come off as like recommendations videos like I really try and focus on the books I'm talking about and why I would recommend or wouldn't recommend them so and I also try and pick different books every time or almost every time so that the content doesn't get boring and I just like I don't know I really I try to make those as interesting and different and fun as possible and I want to do those when I'm excited about them and not because I feel obligated and stressed because I have so many things I've been tagged in. So I guess I'm kind of saying like from here on out I'm not going to be doing any new tags that I'm tagged in. Like if I see a ta fun tag video that I want to do, of course I'm going to do it. And they will definitely be doing the ones I have already been tagged in. I have them written down. I have so many ideas for videos that I'm really excited about doing and I kind of feel like I've been, I've been pressuring myself to do all the things that I've been tagged in and kind of focusing on those over other things, and I don't want to do that anymore. It's not at all your guys' fault. So that's the only, like, kind of quick announcement is, like, no more tags for a while, apart from the ones I've already been tagged in. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!